The saying goes, you can beat a dead horse all you want, but it doesn't come back to life. Well, Disney continues to embody this phrase perfectly with yet another IP resurrected in the necromantic chambers of Disney's deepest, darkest halls. I can only imagine Disney has a knife board with a kid strapped to it, and depending on where the knife sticks determines the source material that will be tied to a gurney and struck with lightning. This time around, it is once again Toy Story, but with a twist. This time, it isn't the toys that we've come to know and love, rather the movie that spawned the Buzz Lightyear figure himself, even opening with a disclaimer that this is the very movie from 1995. Wow, so this film won't force political ideology down our throats, treat the hero like an absolute moron and failure most of the film, and be so boring that children three rows in front of me won't be falling asleep through it? Of course not. Let's get through this. Lightyear opens with Buzz, his friend Alicia, and a crew of 1,200 becoming marooned on a planet after a botched escape attempt from sentient vines. During the escape and subsequent crash, the dropship's lightspeed crystal was destroyed, and without it, the crew cannot leave the planet or travel through space reasonably. So, for the next year, the crew builds a temporary base on this planet, mines up the material, and they decide to construct a new lightspeed crystal and now treat the sentient vines that force them to flee as a joke, because that's the level of writing we're dealing with. Upon its completion, Buzz is given the task of taking the new lightspeed crystal for a test drive, which involves a four-minute slingshot ride around the nearby star and return to the planet. And despite a little engine trouble and doing quick maths, he does make it back right on time. If you ignore the time dilation he experienced, which means Buzz lost four years in space while everyone else assumed he died. This understandably confuses Buzz and anyone who doesn't know what time dilation is, and yes, it is a real phenomenon. But you would think that people capable of light speed travel would know this let alone calculate for it. You know, in fact, how do you think time dilation works? It isn't limited to massive objects with gravitational pull. I don't walk around a fat guy and my girlfriend aged a few years. No, it is literally any time you travel near light speed. Or at all, really. So the explanation should have happened during the briefing, not the debriefing. This is part of why the conflict in this film is so dumb. It should have been about time passing you by because of your laser focus on the mission, which would have related to us, the audience, given the time difference between now and 1995. Because trying to say Buzz needs to play better with others is completely countered by everyone else being completely useless. This is why the team building narrative of the film still trips up like a horse trying to grapevine across a tightrope. What could have been done differently? Buzz pulls back on the helm harder? Would the rookie pulling have really made a difference? That's not how it works, that's the gamer's mentality. If you press the button harder, you deal more damage. Buzz literally did nothing wrong given the circumstances. It's the people around him who are totally and utterly incompetent. It's one thing to show Luke Skywalker to be a failure because of shit writing that is completely contradictory to his character. It is another thing entirely to show that people who have no business being involved in what they've gotten themselves into hinder others and aren't criticized for their justified blame. especially if it falls on the shoulders of others. Because it is Alicia who is the one that brought the fucking rookie. Alicia didn't order the crew to establish a perimeter. Alicia dragged Buzz around on a random straight line path like creating a new Minecraft world. Alicia is a fucking moron that endangered the entire mission from the start and let Buzz accept the blame. And it doesn't stop with her. The rest also have no idea what they're doing. Izzy, Moe, and Darby are like the three blind mice bumbling around while Buzz continues to carry the team like Atlas holding up the sky. Izzy literally nearly gets the entire universe destroyed via temporal paradox because she gets ahead of herself. And arguably the incompetence of the crew continues since apparently they didn't think to bring another lightspeed crystal in case shit went so far south they would end up in space Mexico. Why wasn't there any extra? Or for that matter, why and how does your engineering department not have the schematics or formula to make another stable crystal? Why are you guys just winging it. And I'm only complaining about the first third of the movie. Being busier than a cat burying shit on concrete, I simply do not have the time to go over everything that is wrong with this film, because there is so much. That would be like dragging my nuts across broken glass, then rubbing them with jalapenos. In the meantime, just know that Lightyear is really bad. Disney needs to be stopped, and Pixar must be emancipated. Lightyear is poorly thought out, it's badly written, looks good, sure, but is so boring that as I mentioned earlier, yes, kids three rows ahead of us fell 
asleep through it. Now, will the film financially flop? Oh, you bet, since it opened with only a quarter of its production budget and came behind Jurassic World Dominion in its second weekend. In fact, you want to hear me complain about that extinction event of a film? Well, go check out my review at the link above and subscribe to join my kingdom.